We are taking it to heart this morning. The foods you eat and drink can influence your risk of dying from heart disease, stroke, or type 2 diabetes. You know it. The problem is, is it's hard to make those changes, right? Poor diet is the number one health problem here in the United States. In fact, two out of every three adults is considered overweight or obese. And don't even get me started on children as well who are struggling with this also. March is Nutrition Month and the perfect time to change your eating habits to improve your health. We want to help you this morning. Joining me now with some suggestions and the best foods and also simple changes that you can make to your diet is Dr. Mona Shaw, who's a cardiologist with Baptist Health. Good morning. Thank you for being Good here. Thank so you. we were just talking during the break that by the time you see a patient and they've, they've, they've already had some kind of scare, which hopefully can invigorate them to change their habits but the hard part if you'll explain is sticking to it in terms of eating the right way absolutely so what i always start with my patients with explaining that cardiovascular disease is mainly caused by inflammation and plaque buildup those are the two things us cardiologists and physicians are trying to reduce the best way of reducing that is improving your nutrition it's the number one thing that you can do but sticking to it like you said is very difficult by the time I see someone, a lot of times they've already had their stent, they've had their heart attack, they've had their stroke, and then they're trying to figure out, okay, now what do I do to erase 30, 40, 50 years maybe of eating poorly? Or I get patients who've had family history or they've seen friends around them drop from a heart attack and they want to make the changes then. But sticking to it is the, is the hard part. So I always try to meet patients where they are and say, if you can eat clean, unprocessed foods, less sugary foods, fruits, vegetables, whole grains, 80% of the time. No one's going to eat healthy 100%, right? Do you? No. <laughs> I, I slip every I mean, weekend. I and then right. I was up there in the workout gym this morning like, why did I eat that chocolate? Yes. Oh, yeah, And that's so. what happens. But, you know, 20% of the time, let yourself enjoy it. Don't have the guilt. But you really, majority of the time, you want to try to eat those healthy foods. So how do you take someone, though, who clearly, you know, maybe they grew up in the South on grandma's, you know, biscuits and gravy. I, I know that they, in order for them to live a longer life for their children, for their spouse, they're going to want to make these changes. But I find that a lot of people just don't even realize what are the right and wrong foods to eat, right? Is there really anything wrong with a biscuit? Well... How many are you eating a week, right? It depends on the, if it's a part of the 20%. Right, right. <laughs> so if it's part of the 20%, I mean, you really just can't get away from eating, get away with eating bacon and sausage and, you know, all kinds of processed sugary foods every single day. You know, as a child, a lot of people do, right? You don't really start thinking about diet until you hit your mid-20s or 30s. But if we can try to get people at an earlier age, I think when they're younger, and try to under, have them understand what should your plate be made of, you know, vegetables, fruit, some whole grain and some protein, and stay away from the sugary snacks and the sugary sodas at a young age, I'm hoping that over time, those kind of habits stick in. It's very hard to change habits. Well, and it's hard too because every body type is different, correct? Right. So, so for example, uh, you know, and, and I have this conversation routinely with my children, my daughter in particular, and the reality is is that her body kind of hangs on to those, those carbs and it's harder for her to burn them. Right. And I'm sure you see patients like that, I eat healthy, I feel like I do, I get exercise, but I just can't lose the weight. And then right. you look at someone who feels like they, you, you know, they say, well, my friend, she can eat whatever she wants and she's a toothpick and that is tough to struggle with it is and, and so you know skinny fat that's what you're talking yeah. about the second type yeah. of person so a lot of times patients look or people look skinny right. but they're eating whatever they want they don't get away with it because internally there's a different type of fat and that's the kind of fat that visceral fat that you can't see inside you know it's not the outside thing but it really still does affect and some studies show that even internal fat visceral fat is worse hmm. than having the outside fat it's definitely not any better if you're skinny and still eating poorly you just cannot no one's going to get away with having a poor diet whether you're big small in between just can't get away with it because the arteries inside will develop the plaque so up. don't change your poor eating habits just because when you look at, at yourself in the mirror you're right. not necessarily liking what you see based on the size that you are right. but you have to think about what it's doing to the inside of your right body, i mean right? it's easier to work on the, what you look like outside right. but you got to work on what you look like inside and a lot of times people can eat healthy but still be eating too much 
Yeah. You know, it's calories and portion control is the other big part of it. Size of the fist, right? Right. <laughs> right. That's a big Dr. part of Shaw, it. Yeah. Thank you so much. You're Great welcome. advice. Thank you. And of course, if you miss any of these ways to improve your diet, or if you want to visit Dr. Shaw's blog on nutrition and holistic health in particular, we're going to post this interview and a link to her blog a little later on our website, newsforjax.com. Just look under the Live Healthy section.